Good morning, everybody. This is Turning Towards Life. It is Sunday morning, and we are here to be part of this third space project, which is Justin and I on a Sunday morning, bringing various different sources from our lives and around the world to discuss with everybody by having a conversation together. I'm very, very happy to be here. Also, very feeling the the preemptive sustainingness of the call that we're on now because my family's in a bit of a kerfuffle and my mum isn't doing so well. And so at these times, it feels like there's a there's a move to drop everything, which will probably happen after this. But it also helps me to be to become more present by doing this and be less fearful as well. So I am really grateful to be here and be held by this thing, just as maybe other people are as well. And just be in this inquiry that frankly, when I read the source, I was like, yeah, I have no idea what any of that means. So I'm, I'm here and willing and open and learning and present. And I'm sure what arises will be just what's needed. And of course, James, who wrote the interpretation of this quote by Dogen is a wonderful person and teacher and lovely presence in our lives and so I know it will make sense to me if I stick with it as it always does so I'm very grateful that you've chosen this Justin and grateful to be here for myself and just to be continuing on no matter what as we say. Well good morning everybody I'm glad to be here too and I'm particularly glad Lizzie we were just talking about this to be here with you whilst you're in the midst of some difficulty and that's what it seems to me it's what practice is for and we've talked about this a lot and thought about this a lot together and with other people that it's our it's our practices that shape our lives in so many different ways mm. and that I'm so appreciating that in the midst of everything you're in the middle of that you're here for our shared practice both both that you're here but also knowing what it does mm. for us to be in this and to be in this with so many other people. Mm. And I've certainly felt that myself many times in the year and a bit since we've been doing this, about mm. how sustaining it is to keep on showing up, mm. you know, sort of in the middle of who knows what, the, the yeah. complexity and the mystery of our lives. Yeah. And um, we've also talked about this so many times that... Um, something you've kept on bringing which is that we can't really do life alone no we can't do it alone so here we are there's you and i doing this together and doing this um uh in a way that can include other people exactly i'm just scrabbling around for my headphones justin because i realize that that's normally helpful and i can't find them uh so i'm just we're just gonna have to carry on and we're gonna we'll have to carry on without headphones suffer what it ever means <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a t there's a tiny little bit of um, echoey feedback that comes back, but apart from that, as far as as far as I can hear, it's fine. If it gets bad, tell me and I'll scrabble around in a different room. You have to build some. <laughs> On you have to put some together with a coat hanger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to say all well, of that. There was something else that I had in mind to say. Oh yes, I want to say something a little bit about the source. So apart from the fact that it's from our dear friend and colleague and teacher, James. Um, this is a source that I've been carrying around with me for a while. I was, last week, I was reading back over, um, you'll know this, there's you other people might not know this, that I, like many people, keep a journal and do lots and lots and lots of writing. And I was scanning, I've taken to, here's my current journal, and I was scanning it. I've been taking, taking to, scanning it in so that if I lose it, I've got a record of, what I've been writing because there's so much in there I go back and read and I think um oh my goodness did I write that that's um, and I see things that I forget and see things that I forget and then see things that I forget again anyway so I was scanning my diary from last year my journal from last year and I came across this piece by James that was stuck in the middle and it was stuck there because it had arrived in my life at a time which feels very reminiscent of now, where I feel deeply confused about what it is to be me and deeply confused about what it is to be a person. Like mm. it seems more, the more I grasp for it, the less I can grasp. The more I try to 
make sense of myself and life, the less I can make sense of. <clears throat> and over the last week or so, I've been coming to this sense of, um, oh, maybe if I don't try to hold on so tight, something else will happen. But maybe it would be okay to be deeply, deeply, deeply confused. Mm. And I think that this source is about that, actually. Mm. So here we go. So this is a reminder to everyone, if you're um, with us, that you can always find our sources either on the Facebook group or on turningtowards.life, which is where I'm going to read this one first from. Shall I read it first, Lizzie? Yeah. Okay. And Lizzie, if you press, if you just mute yourself whilst I'm reading, I think we'll get better sound and then you can, we'll see if that helps. Yeah, it makes the feedback go away, I think. So the only other thing I realised I wanted to say this morning was um, for anyone who's coming across us the first time this morning, you'll see that the whole point of this is that we're, we're doing our best to be as informal and as real as possible. So we're sitting in our own houses doing this thing and I love it. I love that it's unrehearsed and we have no idea what we're going to talk about with this source. So the first part of this source is from um, a Zen uh, writer called Dogen, who was writing in the 13th century. And he writes, the way the self arrays itself is the form of the entire world. See each thing in this entire world as a moment of time. Things do not hinder one another, just as moments do not hinder one another. The way-seeking mind arises in this moment. A way-seeking moment arises in this mind. It is the same with practice and with attaining the way. Thus, the self setting itself out in array sees itself. This is understanding that the self is time. And then James writes, When we mistake who we are, we, are, we hopelessly strive to protect ourselves fruitlessly attempt to defend what we feel we need to maintain ourselves and at the deepest level feel unmet, unheld, unknown by the world. All of this because we define ourselves, feel ourselves, know ourselves as much too small and then insist that everyone submit to our definition and treat us as this smallness. All, the, all of this, of course, is quite normal and what our culture produces nonetheless it is the source of our discontent and our sharing that discontent with others. See dysfunctional families, territorial politics at work, wars, crime, violence. You get the picture. Dogen in the quote above has a different possibility for us to enter into a different path to take. What if we are the same being as the world? What if we are the same being as time is. Even if we think that world is limited, by the way, Dogen means the entire universe, not just the planet Earth, we know that time has no beginning or no end that, that we can imagine. If we are time, which is inseparable from all other phenomena, then certainly we don't have to defend, protect, or feel relationally wounded. And the answer to how far do I extend is answered quite differently. So when we mistake who we are, we hopelessly strive to protect ourselves, fruitlessly attempt to defend what we feel we need to maintain ourselves, what we feel, what we, feel we need to maintain ourselves, and at the deepest level feel unmet, unheld, unknown by the world. All of this because we define ourselves, feel ourselves, know ourselves as much too small and then insist that everyone submit to our definition and treat us as this smallness. All of this of course is quite normal and what our culture produces. Nonetheless, it is the source of our discontent and our sharing that discontent with others. See dysfunctional families, territorial politics at work, wars, crime, violence, you get the picture. Dogen in the quote below has a different possibility for us to enter into, a different path to take. What if we are the same being as the world? 
what if we are the same being as time is? Even if we think that world is limited, by the way Dogen means the entire universe, not just the planet Earth, we know that time has no beginning or end that we can imagine. If we are time, which is inseparable from all other phenomena, then certainly we don't have to defend, protect, or feel rationally, sorry, relationally wounded. And the answer to how far do I extend is answered quite differently. So I, I had, um, I think I probably talked about this with you, Lizzie, but I don't think I've ever talked about this in any, any other wide forum a few years ago on a summer's afternoon I was doing some work with an organization that was very new to me and I'd had a terrible start to the day because I got really lost on the way and I turned up like an hour and a half late for a group of people who were waiting for me and I was running someone else's program that I hadn't designed that I didn't really know so it was all a whole big difficult situation and I started the program in the morning and then the people who were on the on the program had to do a whole load of work on their own and I went for a walk and whilst I was on the walk something happened to me that's never happened before which is I got I got to see an incredibly deep and unarguable way that everything I'd taken myself to be was a fiction and that I was no different to the sun and to the earth itself and to the trees. Like um, a, a total dropping away of all sense of separateness between me and anything else. And I could also see whilst I was in this experience, which lasted maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, I could also see that my stories about myself were just stories and that all the ways that we present ourselves to one another are a mask which mar masks a much deeper something that we all are that's not different and that we all arise from a, a deep timeless something that we're just the expressions of and I'd never seen the world I'd never seen the world that way before and when it finished this experience of being like being so vast as to include everything and and to not be a separate something when it finished and it was like the world kind of collapsed back down to its normal proportions i can still remember the experience really really clearly but it's a stretch it's a stretch to step into it and to see the world again that way and i think that's what Dogen is writing about and what James is writing about that there's a I'm doing my I'm doing my best to say anything about what it was like but there's there's a way in which our bodies and our particular history create this story about ourselves that we're separate things and we can't be met by the world because we're completely different to the world and I got this glimpse of all of us everything being everything that everything is everything, which is a weird way to try and grasp at something in language. And that, and that um, nothing really begins or really ends. And I suppose for that half an hour or so, nothing, I felt frightened of nothing and accepting of everything and not caught up in having to have the world turn out my way and then wanting to contribute and feeling incredibly loving towards everything into the world and some people might say that's a hallucination or a and I think it's a kind of truth and it's all wrapped up in this little tricky stretching piece by Dogen and James you're muted Lizzie you have to <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to muting myself, so I have to get used to that little routine now because of my headphones being this week. Um, 
Yeah, I just want to say I think it really is tricky and it is stretching. And I think because of, I, I guess, where I'm in now, which is quite a basic place of um, we're all going to die. And right now it feels quite close to me and I feel very attached to the people that I love. Um, I noticed that this kind of, for my current state, this kind of very, I experience this as quite a cognitive exercise of um, like a concept, like time feels like a concept to me. Like, um, And so I find it really hard to, and I think I have like a slightly dyslexic mind too. So that, that this kind of writing is a big invitation to me because it, it is a, a kind of breakdown in my way of being able to process information. Like it's very hard for me to process this information into something really intangible and have something coherent to say about it. Um, and as always, I try and take that not as a kind of feeling I could feel kind of rejected by it or I'm not clever enough to understand it or, you know, whatever narratives I have. But what I'm trying to do currently is just see that I have a particular mind and way of thinking and other people have very different ones. But how can I be invited by people's different ways of thinking into something more expansive rather than thinking I can't participate in it? And I feel like if I just drop into the invitation of what this is and what the, what the style of writing does to me in the first place, which actually I think is one of the gifts from Dogen to me in, my, in the way I can receive things and maybe lots of Zen, is that I can feel the genuineness of both James and Dogen. I can feel that. So I know what's being said isn't untrue or exclusionary or whatever the word is and so I stay and I think it's a little bit like reading philosophy and feeling like can I can I be here if I'm not able to intellectually conceptualize what these concepts of extension and separateness and that I am the same being as time like that makes my brain go like like there's a kind of schism in my brain that I can't like like as if the cogs stop working and where they were oiled before with relational topics and spiritual topics. And although I think this has got lots of spirituality in it, it's this kind of, the cogs stop working. So when my cogs stop working, it's a different kind of invitation to receive and not try and work it out and just be invited and feel invited into a different kind of realm that I have a natural capacity for. And in that, the, the, the piece at the end really is the bit that I can relate to, which is how far do I extend? Like that bit I can work with. I, I, know, I know I have a heart that's way, way bigger than my body and bigger than my house and bigger than as far as I can imagine. And sometimes that's very hard to, to be with because it means that there's a kind of sensitivity and a pain that happens because of that. And I get the part about having a definition of ourselves that's so small and we demand people to meet us there and how much pain that produces as well. And I think this, this week, actually, I've been in lots of conversations about what it means to be in an encounter with somebody who sees you much clearer than you see yourself in the truth of you rather than in the smallness of you and I think that's the invitation to this as well is that we are far different bigger more expansive than we can possibly understand when we habitually live in this definition of smallness that we have taken ourselves to be because of our misunderstanding that we are different kinds of beings than time and the moment and all of that stuff so yeah I wanted just to say that because it's like it's hard for me to produce a kind of conceptual response to this thing and be honest 
<laughs> and I think it's meant to mess with us. I think that's part of the deal to, to what you're describing. Of course, will be particular to you, but it's not particular to you either. I think it's one of the things that I've loved about this and why I felt why it was in my journal and why it caught my eye. I've been sort of really wondering why was it in my journal then and why did it catch my eye now? There were 200 pages in this journal that I was snapping pictures of. And I, I realized that one of the things that caught me now is because the answers that I have to my own questions about what I am all seem insufficient. I can't answer the question at the moment. And there have been times in my life that I have. I've been to say, well, I'm this kind of person. I'm a father and a son and a brother and a husband and, a, and I coach and I, you know, we have third space. And, but recently, all of those are true, but none of those answers have been felt truthful enough or big enough. And then I go, well, I'm somebody who loves, yes. And then oh, none of them, you know, I could just keep going with, with ways of defining myself. And then Dogan and James come in and they say stuff and we go, well, I don't even begin to get what that means. But one thing I, I can get quickly from this is, oh, there's a whole other way. There's a whole other way of understanding ourselves that's being called for here that's like outside mm. of my normal way. And I'm so sure about my normal ways of making sense of things like they seem so obvious and it's so distressing for them for none of them to work for none of them to meet the world and in a way it's for me it's a great relief to read something like this and go oh maybe maybe i, I could for a while give up on all of my familiar ways of understanding what it is to be a, a human being and there might really be something there too to kind of get the tokens like over here talking weird stuff about time how could I be the same as time? I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what time is. Mm. <laughs> but boy, it's an invitation, at least for me, to think, well, maybe if I'm the same stuff as time, then so are you and so is everything. Mm. And the thought I had whilst you were talking about your, so honestly and beautifully about your grappling with this, the thought I had was um, maybe part of the implication here is this, that Everything's been waiting for us always. Mm. Like, there's a line in the David White poem where he says, you're not some accident. Mm. How could any of us be an accident if this was the case, as much as I get of it? And if we're not accidents, what are we? Yeah. What does it mean to be in relationship to anyone? Or to be in difficulty like you're describing in, in right now, the difficulty you're in, what's... What's it in, in a difficulty when we know ourselves as not lonely accidents separate from everything, but somehow woven up, that all of it is woven up in the wholeness of mm. all of it. Yeah. And I also think it, it would be easy, like, so the bit where, it's, where James says, you know, if we are time which is inseparable from all other phenomena, then certainly we don't have to defend, protect, or feel relationally wounded. And I also want to be an advocate for this not being something that, oh, well, if I don't think that, then there's something inadequate about me because I do defend and I do protect and I do feel wounded. It's like it's not, this is not like an instant something, like a human being is not of that nature. And it feels like, as with so many of these things, they can all so easily be turned into a, ah, oh, well, I'm supposed to think I'm time. And therefore I'm supposed to be immune to defending myself or protecting myself or feeling wounded as if there's some solution out there or something. And I so appreciate these wide, wide possibilities of what it is to be human. And I also think that to integrate and to be here with what is, is really, really important. And to imagine we can think ourselves conceptually out of anything without the other parts of us being involved is a mistake. And, a, um, and I think our culture kind of says that to us. Or so you can think your way out of this. You can conceptualize your way out of this. You can rationalize. I just think there's so much more to us than that. 
and you know even if I did think I was time I would still feel really 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 worried about my mum like it doesn't kind of um it, it it has this beautiful place in the array of things like everything does and it serves us in a very high deep wide way to feel into all these things for sure and I can feel the part of me that's wanting to join worlds together rather than think I should be in one when I'm in another. And that line for me particularly is um, a big invitation and also a big kind of reality check to know that oh, I'm an earthling and someone who's in the thick of life and I'm not, I don't have my head in the clouds. I want to be here and I know that there's pain and that it's scary feeling just as attached and loving as I do and as broken open as I do. And that's what has me also be contactful mm. and have empathy and be kind and feeling all of the worlds that we can draw from, I think is part of me being an integrated person anyway, that this is a big invitation and there is, um, there's all kinds of these things around. And I think that's what I love about turning towards life is that we are drawing on many, many, many different places for our wisdom and for our injections of difference and variation. And when I look back at all of our 60 something episodes and I, I met somebody new yesterday and I told her about our thing, I said, Oh, you can go on a website and there's, and there's 60 something different things and you can just pick a title that feels interesting to you. And then I had a look at it and I thought, my God, there's so much different stuff. And I'm appreciating in this moment, this is another kind of difference that we're kind of welcoming here and letting be in the array of things that sits around us and comes through us and is inviting us to inquiring as well. I, th I think the way to be with... <laughs> <clears throat> possibilities that are expressed here is exactly the, the way that you're saying Lizzie I, I really appreciate your way of talking about including ourselves and including everything and not having this be some bypass some leap you have to make that you read it and you go oh now I'm meant to think this way and if I only could everything would be fine no, no that would be a and it's really easy to go that way or to get into sort of self-criticism go well I don't see the world that way and therefore there must be something wrong and I think it's more like language that can help us when we find ourselves in an unfamiliar place that Dogen and James are writing about this so instead of using it to um squeeze ourselves into some different shape to read something like this as a kind of welcome to a possibility that if we don't fight, if we don't effort for it. And it got me, what you were saying got me thinking that maybe part of what both Dogen and James are saying here is sometimes we see that we are time and that other people are time and that the world is time and that our pain is time and that our grief is time and our love is time and the trees are time and the earth is time and the people we are frightened of are time and that and in a way it doesn't matter what word you put in whether you call that time or god or existence or mystery or nothingness or there's a way in which it doesn't matter what word goes in there as long as it's big enough that it can undo our sense of I'm this um, separate something with no support and nothing to stand on long long distance away and suffering on my own it brings everything in close and allows and it's a path to including everything including our broken heartedness and not running from it mm. and including our sorrow and not running from it so it's not like a recipe for a groovy life or something but more like um, a deep recognition of the necessariness of all of it I was groping for words here mm. so there's a really there's a really kind 
integrating, including way to come at this. And there's also a really harsh, I've fallen short, I don't get it. I'm meant to be different. I'm meant to have made this developmental leap. Mm -hmm. But boys are helpful, I think, when we're really lost to have different language. Mm -hmm. Just to let ourselves be lost in it and have language for being lost. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of has the quality of even if you're not lost, you feel lost. <laughs> Like even if you're not in the place of I don't know who I am, and you read this, that quality of not knowing who one is arises. Like it's 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 talking about it and inviting that to be real and here at the same time. Yeah, mm. I've been um, grappling a lot recently, and I think I've said this in our conversations here with uh, being afraid. Mm. And what I found as I've read this is that very often I treat, so I think the two really big ones, difficult experiences for me, the ones that I fight against are grief and fear. Mm. I know there are others too. And as I've been settling into this piece, I've been, I've been wondering what, what if I welcome fear as not something other, but as the same, made of the same stuff as me? And what if I welcome grief as not something other but made of the same stuff as me and when that happens I'm so much softer and so much more able to be mm. to include it all and so in a way that's the other thing I think that's going on for me here in this conversation is is the possibility that we stop treating stuff as other mm. and then when we do that we can find a way to be more in contact with one another and with what's in here. So here we are in this. You, you said what was going on in your life earlier was a kerfuffle, which I think is a very, um, it's a very gorgeous way that you have of talking about being in the midst of difficulty. And here we are right in the midst of the difficulty and confusion of life on this couple of days before Christmas. Mm. And um, we're also at the end of our time. Yeah. All ready for today. So I think what I want to say by way of ending is I, I want to say thank you to everyone, to all of you who continue to be with us and to join us for this conversation. And I want to say thank you, particularly to you, Lizzie, for keeping on doing this with me. Mm. And that we keep on turning up with stretching texts and stretching life situations and um, keep on diving into asking questions and exploring together. It's really precious. Mm. I feel very lucky to be able to do this. and. I'm looking forward to weeks and weeks of continuing to be in this conversation together. Mm. Yeah, I want to say thank you as well, Justin, for your doing this too. And it's it's a real gift and really quite amazing that we're doing it and that we've done it and that the commitment is a commitment. It's actually a commitment, I think. <laughs> like, actually, Looks like it, doesn't it? Going. <laughs> um, I feel very grateful and and very thrown around by our sources and I think if I didn't it wouldn't be real so I'm glad of that and glad, glad that this is a real endeavour and not something as you say that would, would, would be scripted or worked out or something but I think that's what, what certainly what's interesting to me in the world and I think that hopefully everybody listening finds it real I think realness and straightforward honesty about being human is completely compelling and is very important to be in the conversation. So I'm very grateful that everyone's here and willing to be with us. Mm -hmm. All being well, we will see you next week on the 30th of December, just coming up to the eve of the new year. And we'll see you then. Bye everyone.